This is Chris Martin with FreeFX Tutorials and today I want to talk about how to get geometry in and out of real flow from Cinema 4D. So I've got this pretty simple scene here with a cube and I've got a few objects and I'm going to want to take these into real flow and do a simulation and have these objects sort of float around in the water or the fluid that we create in real flow. So obviously you need to have real flow installed and get your scene set up the way that you want to. After that we're going to go to plugins, real flow, and we're going to go ahead and create an SD file. So an SD file is a proprietary real flow file and it has some other options built into it that account for animation but we're not going to actually animate anything here in Cinema 4D. We're going to let the animation happen in RealFlow, but we're still going to export as an SD. So RealFlow SD exporter, we get this little dialog, and we say where we're going to want the path, and I want this to go right here. Click on Save. We'll replace it. I'm going to add all of my objects, and I'm going to click on Export. That simple. Now I'm going to come over to Real Flow. Now I went ahead and set this up, the file system already, because I'm doing this tutorial and I didn't want to have to have you guys see me try to fit this into the dimensions of the tutorial recording. So if you are starting from scratch, you can do File New, you're going to get a dialog like this. You need to give it a project name, a location, and then it will create all of the files needed for the real flow simulation. But we've already got it set up. So I'm going to go to import object and I'm going to go to the place where my real flow SD file resides, which is right here. I'm going to double click that. And we can see that we have our geometry. Now this says warning object logo contains six degenerated faces that will be ignored. Set a higher scale. I'm going to ignore that for now. I think this is going to work out just fine. So the interface works basically like most 3D apps. I'm using Alt and moving around right here with my left mouse button. If I select something like this, I can use E, R, and T and to transform the objects. What I want to do right now though is I want to select my logo, platonic, and the sphere and come over to the node and make these inactive right now. So I don't want these to have any bearing on what's fixing to happen because I'm going to fill this box up with fluid. And I just don't want them getting in the way. So, now before I do that, I'm going to come up here and drop in some daemons. So I want a kill volume. I want some gravity. And I'm going to want a kill speed, which is right here. Now for the kill volume, I'm going to say fit to scene. And you'll see that I get this box here that covers or encompasses everything in the scene and basically what this is going to do it's going to make sure that no particles escape from this simulation because if you get a random particle that just gets out of here and just continues to go and go and go it'll eventually shut your computer down so this is just sort of a safety measure now we don't need to see that so I'm going to go to display make that invisible the kill speed we don't need this yet so I'm going to disable that make it inactive for the moment. The gravity, we do need that. We don't need to see it, so we'll turn that off for the display. And then the next thing I want to do is go ahead and drop in a fill object. Now the fill object is going to fill up any object in the scene that I want it to, and I'm going to have it fill up the box. So we'll come down here. We'll select the main box, 
click OK. Fill volume, yes. And now you can see we have our particles here. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the timeline right here by clicking this little lock key. And what this is going to do, it's going to allow me to simulate without actually recording any keyframes yet. So basically what I want to happen here is for this fluid to sort of settle. Because right now it's just been introduced to the scene and you can see it's sort of in this grid format. So what we want to happen, or what we want to have happen, is for this to sort of settle here in the cube. Sort of calm, I guess. Calm itself down. And to help out that calming, I'm going to turn this kill speed back on. So we'll go over here, go up, make that active. Let's just look at the parameters here. We want limit and keep set to yes. So basically what it's saying is that this max speed, anything that goes over 10, it's going to slow it down. So now that I have that selected and that set up and I've got my timeline locked, I'm going to go ahead and click on simulate. And now we have it working. So we can see what's happening. Now, this is going to take a little while. I'm going to let it simulate for a bit. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and when it's calmed down quite a bit, we will continue. Okay, so we're back, and the fluid is pretty much settled. So I'm going to click on the Simulate button to stop. And what I want to go ahead and do now is create an initial state. So right now, if we hit Reset, all of these particles would go back to the grid-like state that they were in when we first introduced them into the scene. I want this settled state that they're in now. So, we'll come up here, go to Initial State, use Initial State, set that to Yes, click on Make Initial State, and then click down here to the right of Reset, Reset to Initial State, so that that is checked, and click Reset. And now, when we start our simulation, we start from this point. So now, we'll go ahead and uncheck the timeline. We'll select our platonic, the sphere, and the logo, and activate these. Turn them to active. The next thing we want to do is turn on dynamics for all of these. And these are going to be active rigid bodies. And if we click on the rigid body tab now, we can select the mass. I'm going to select 50, just guessing here, for the mass. And I also want to take the main box, and I want to turn that into a dynamic object. Let's see, that's going to be right here. And we want that to be a passive rigid body. That way, in case these go all the way to the bottom, they don't penetrate the box. So we have all of that set. I think we're ready to go. And I'm going to go to a different view. By hitting 1, 2, 3, and 4, you can go to different views here. So I'm going to go to this view. And I'm going to click on Simulate. Now, again, this is going to take a little time. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and come back when we are a little further along in the simulation so we can see what's happening. One last thing that we need to do before we start the simulation is to turn the kill speed off. So we'll go ahead and we'll make this inactive because we don't need it affecting the whole simulation and killing off particles anymore and that just slows everything down. Okay, so with that turned off, we are ready to move forward with the simulation. So we'll click on Simulate. And I will be back shortly. All right, so we're back. And we can see that we have our pieces falling into the 
fluid and they're sort of floating around. Let's go over here to another view. Take a look at that. All right. Now, one thing I need to mention is that I went back and for the logo, the platonic, and the sphere, we needed to change a couple more things here in the rigid bodies. So, in addition to the mass of 50, we changed these to convex hull. And on the main box, we changed that to, it was actually, the default is mesh. The collision side needs to be set to inside instead of outside. So with those changes, everything should work properly. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and build a mesh out of these particles. So let's go ahead and select the fill object. And we'll come up here to the meshes. And we want to choose the render kit particle mesh. And that's going to drop that in and make the fill object a child of the render kit mesh. So now if we right click on here we can say build and you can see down here it's meshing and we have a mesh here for our fluids. Now we can come up here and we can take a look at a few different smoothing options so that we can take a look at this in several different ways. But that's basically what our fluid is going to look like. Now in another tutorial or a later tutorial we'll get into some of the more nuances of playing around with this particle mesh by changing all these parameters and changing the parameters that we see over here. But for this tutorial, I just want to kind of show you how to get the stuff in and out of RealFlow. So let's go ahead and push forward. So once you are happy with the mesh that you have, you just go back to the beginning of your timeline and with the particle mesh selected, you click on Build Meshes. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and I will be back when the meshes are finished. Okay, so we're back, and we're completely meshed. And so now we're going to go back into Cinema 4D. So I'm going to open up the file that I had right here. And we could import the file back over the geometry that we have here, but I'm going to show you another way to do it. I'm going to delete everything I have in here. Go to Plugins. RealFlow SD Importer. And I'm going to navigate, just show you, I'm going to navigate to the place where my RealFlow files are. And I'm going to go to Objects, double click on Animation.SD, and click Import. Now this is going to bring all of my geometry back in from RealFlow. And if we scrub the timeline, we can see that it is following the animation from back in RealFlow. So now we need to get our fluid in here. So we'll go to Plugins, RealFlow, Mesh Importer. And we'll go to the Meshes. Select the first particle mesh. Click Open. And you can see that we have our fluid in here now. So there are many different ways that we can get rid of this fluid that's coming outside the box. We could do that back in RealFlow. And again, that's something that we can cover in another tutorial. Something quick and easy that you could do is select this, go into Polygon Mode, right-click, go to Extrude, and just extrude it out a little bit. So now we can just scrub through there, and we can see it seems to be working. Now it's as simple as going, maybe grabbing some materials. Do a quick little render there. Let's go ahead and drag this down. And there we go. All right. So that is how we get 
geometry out of Cinema 4D into RealFlow and back. This is Chris Martin with Free Effects Tutorials, and I'll see you next time.